Hi everybody, this is Levi Clay and I'm back again with another video in my series, Guitar Books That You Must Own. This time we're going to be talking about the subject of sight reading, or at least reading skills. And I'm going to be showing you the book, Reading Studies for Guitar. Hopefully that's not shining too much. Reading Studies for Guitar by William Leavitt, or as I've always referred to him, Bill Leavitt. Uh, I don't know if anybody actually calls him Bill Leavitt, but I'm sure Ian Scott, my reading teacher at university, constantly referred to William Leavitt as Bill Leavitt. Uh, so it kind of stuck. Um, William Leavitt, fantastic writer that has written many books for Berkeley Press. This particular one, Reading, reading Studies for Guitar, covers the subject of reading, as you might expect. Um, though he does have other books like the infamous or famous Guitar Methods 1, 2 and 3, which are also great books and I may talk about those in future. The reason I like this particular book um, is because it's not about reading. It's not going to teach you how to read. That's a subject for another day. In fact, I find the subject of reading um, quite a difficult one to cover using a book because people have different methods for, for reading. And really, you can apply any of the methods to any reading material and get the same results, if that makes any sense. What I'm getting at here is using material to practice your reading. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best books that you can buy. And the reason for that is very simple. While I do suggest that you absolutely go out and collect as much reading material for your reading practice as possible, you know, uh, Bach violin pieces or, or lute pieces, just read anything. Classical music you can purchase very cheaply uh, and you'll get great use reading um, material from those sorts of things. I used to read a lot of the uh, Bach two-part inventions. I thought they were a lot of fun to read. So uh, anything like that is going to be fantastic for your reading practice. But the problem with practicing reading is that if you read the same piece lots and lots of times, you start moving out of the territory of uh, reading the piece and you move into memorizing the piece. Now that's still a skill that is of use to you because that's you're, you're sort of interpreting the piece from the page and you're committing it to memory via reading it over and over. That's a, a skill in itself. But if you want purely sight reading skills, you need to constantly be reading lots of different material. This is why I think this book is great. Aside from having lots and lots of uh, uh, musical examples in it, it's quite a dense book. Uh, let's have a look, how many pages do we have? About 108 pages, 108 pages. Uh, the thing I really liked about this and that I've not seen in any other books is that he likes to change key. Now here you can see or maybe you can't see because my lights might be blinding you a little bit there. Um, the first piece in the book is great because it starts you out reading in the key of C. You read for four bars, sorry, just two bars actually, and, and an accidental is introduced. He introduces a G sharp, which would tell me in the key of C that we're, we're implying a harmonic minor. But after those four bars are up, uh, eight bars even, the key changes. Not with accidentals, but with a new key signature. You're in the key of F. Then eight bars later, you're in the key of G. Eight bars later, you're in the key of D. Eight bars after that, you're in the key of A. Eight bars after that, you're in the key of B flat. Now, that is fantastic. I can't stress how great a tool that is. Because as a reader, I've always found the trickiest part of reading was getting comfortable with changing keys. Reading in keys that, one, that are alien to the ones that you're comfortable with as a as a reader or as a guitar player. Uh, and this forces you to work on that skill. Reading keys is about understanding accidentals and what keys, uh, how you finger the key in your given system. This is excellent for that, really is good for that. And I can't recommend that enough. So if you want pieces that are gonna go across multiple keys, this is a great resource. There are also, on the downside, lots of chordal studies to read where you're reading three, four, even five notes at a time. Now when I say the downside, uh, obviously I'm, I'm teasing a little bit, uh, I just find the idea of reading chords on the fly, I know people can do it, but for me it's one that's uh, so far ahead of what I'm capable of as a reader, but also one that I don't really think I'm ever going to need to use. Uh, but in terms of material for single note vocabulary. This is a fantastic book. There are actually two books in the series. This is Reading Studies for Guitar Positions 1 through 7 and Multi-Position Studies in All Keys. There is also an advanced book which is in my library um, which moves through positions uh, 7 and beyond. It goes all the way up the to the dusty end of the neck as they say. Um, and it, it really is a fantastic book. Very cheap as well. Um, so check out the link to Amazon below and uh, pick yourself up a copy of it because 
it's one that we should all have kicking around. I'm sure we'll talk more about some of William Leavitt's books in the future because he's a great writer. What do you guys think though? Do you have this book? You should have this book, it's a great book. Uh, do you have any great reading material that you would recommend? There's definitely more that I'm going to talk about in future if you are a reader. Um, if you are a reader, what method did you use for reading? That's the interesting one. I was taught by Ian Scott and I use Ian's method um, and it, it sticks within that method rather than using, uh, si you know, there are definitely systems out there that don't, that I, I would struggle with to read, kind of hard way to uh, explain that, but you get what I'm getting at. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's always interesting to talk to other players. And finally, uh, do check out the link to my Patreon page. This video was brought to you in conjunction with my supporters over on Patreon. If you do like this channel, if you like the content that I am making and you want me to keep making more of that content, please do head on over to my Patreon and consider contributing. Um, you can get involved for as little as $1 and at that tier you're getting stuff in return. But there are plenty more other things that you can get from my Patreon, like access to my monthly transcription challenge. You can actually request, request videos. I'm going to be filming one for one of my Patreons um, shortly. And, of course, uh, you can get video credits, etc. On the note of video credits, let's cut over to the fantastic gentlemen that support me on this channel at a tier of $10 or more. These guys are more than fantastic. I'm huge fans of their generosity and their understanding uh, that supporting content creators that you like is the best way to keep getting content that you enjoy. I support a few people on Patreon myself because I want them to keep making content. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Thanks very much, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.